This story takes place during New Year's Eve. A young girl named Anya lived with her stepmother and stepsister who treated her poorly. On this night, it was cold and dark and a terrible blizzard was happening. While Anya was inside, cleaning the house and preparing for the new year, her stepmother and sister came in. I want you, said the stepmother, to go out now and pick some galanthus flowers. Galanthus flowers? The snowdrops? But, stepmother, it's New Year's Eve and there's a blizzard. Nothing grows out during this time. The snowdrop flowers only grow during April. Oh, hush up, dear child. I say that, dear, because the only dear you are to me is just being a housekeeper. And you're not a very good one either. Now listen. While your sister and I were in town today, we overheard an announcement. The queen herself has decreed that she wants snowdrops at her table on New Year's Day for her party. She loves these flowers and wants them at once. And whoever brings her a basket full of these flowers will have that basket returned to them full of gold. Exactly, said her stepsister. Just imagine all that Mother and I could buy with everything. And we could also take care of you, I guess. But please, said Anya, you know I do what I can to help you and take care of you. Don't let me go out there in the cold. Not on New Year's Eve, not during a blizzard. You ungrateful girl. The stepmother grabbed a basket and a shawl and tossed them at Anya. Flung open the door as the wind howled and blustered through with the snow. Go out at once. Either you come back with those flowers or don't come back at all. Anya had no choice. She took her shawl and the basket and headed down to the freezing cold snow. She trudged as much as she could through the snow, the blizzard, and the cold. But there was nothing outside, nothing but coldness and emptiness. Not even a blade of grass was growing. Anya felt sure that she was going to freeze out there. Oh, and as she wiped away the snow and the cold from her eyes, she saw a beautiful light in the distance. Light. What is that? She began to follow it. It was like a star. As she followed the light, the light grew bigger and bigger. And soon she reached a beautiful bonfire that was beside a lake, a perfectly round lake that was shaped like a bowl. And beside the bonfire were twelve men. Very odd, thought Anya. Why on earth would there be men out here in the freezing cold? Well, she saw one of them who had a beautiful white thick beard. He looked almost like Father Christmas himself. He was passing a staff. Here, Brother January, it is now midnight, the day of New Year's Day. It is time for you to take over. Thank you, Brother December. December? January? These are months. Well, Anya got a little closer because the fire felt so inviting. Excuse me. Uh, forgive me for intruding. Happy New Year to you all. May I warm myself a bit by your fire? We don't usually allow strangers near here. But there was one of the men who was quite young who jumped up. Wait! Brothers, don't you recognize her? This is Anya. How do you know my name? It's simple. You see, my dear, we are the 12 months. I am April. I know everything there is to know about you in April. The one that was December looked at her. Yes, I know about you too. I am mighty December. You help take care of the poor woodland creatures who can't forage for food during this time. Brother, said April, she is so kind and dear. Let her warm up. Thank you, said Anya. You wouldn't happen to know where I could find Galanthus flowers, do you? Galanthus flowers? But this is New Year's Day. Those won't grow until my time. I know. But my mother, stepmother actually, she ordered me to go out and get a basket full because the queen will reward anybody with gold. I don't really care for the gold. I just want to go home. But my stepmother said I can't. Not unless I bring back those flowers. Well, what say you, dear brother? said April. Let's give her an hour. They all nodded in agreement. 
January took his mighty staff that was shiny and brilliant like an icicle. Here, Brother April, give her one hour. April took the staff, and all of a sudden it melted into a beautiful sapling tree full of beautiful blossoms and green, and it had the effect all around the lake where they were at. Suddenly the wind stopped howling and the snow stopped blowing, and all around there were beautiful flowers. The grass was growing. The animals came out of hibernation to scurry about. This is a dream. No, said April. My brothers and I are giving you spring just for one hour. Go and pick your flowers. Thank you so much. Anya quickly picked as many flowers as she could and filled her basket. They look so lovely. Thank you so much. Thank you, said Anya. I won't forget this ever. And because of your kindness, said April, I wish to give you this. He reached into his pocket and pulled out a beautiful ring. It wasn't like any ring ever. It was shining blue like a sapphire, clear and crystal like ice. He put it on her hand. If you should ever need us, take the ring and throw it. And as it rolls, say, roll, roll along ring. Pass through the gates of spring. Pass through summer, pass through autumn, over the carpet of winter without any fear, roll up to the door of the waiting new year. But if you should ever lose the ring, you'll never see us again. I'll keep it safe with me. Please listen to this advice as well, dear Anya, said January. On the last day of the old year, in the beginning of the new one, you found us the twelve months, and we let you get these flowers. You must promise never to tell anyone where you got them and never tell anyone about us. I promise, said Anya. Thank you again. And she rushed off, and as she did, April handed the staff back to January, and once again that clearing was full of ice and snow and a blizzard. Oh, Anya was only too happy to get back home. Her stepmother and her stepsister were astonished. You actually found those flowers! Oh, wonderful! Now we are going to get all that gold. And... If we're up to it, we'll spare some for you, just to get you some clothes, maybe some food. Well, the stepmother and stepsister couldn't wait. They carried the basket and quickly headed to the palace. And as they reached it, they, were, they saw everyone celebrating the wonderful new year. Everyone was in their splendor. There was food and music. <sighs> Only the young queen sitting in her throne was not pleased. But everyone was around her, wishing her Happy New Year. How dare you say it's a Happy New Year? Why, without Calanthus flowers, it is not the New Year. Today is not January 1st, it is December 32nd. Surely you are choking, Your Majesty. I am not. Until I get those flowers, it is December 32nd. Then it'll be followed by the 33rd, and the 34th, and so on. Well... A palace guard approached the queen. Your majesty, there is a woman and her daughter here. They have Galantha's flowers for you. <gasps> oh, she was so pleased to see them. She quickly bundled them in her arms and took a wonderful smell of them. Oh, happy new year. I, the queen, now declare to be New Year's Day. Very happy new year, everyone said. Now, before I can reward you, woman and, and girl, you must tell me where did you find these? Oh, uh, well, uh, by, uh, by a lake, her daughter tried up. It was shaped like a soup bowl. Uh, yeah, and, uh, there were just flowers there. We tried to go back and get some more, but it's all gone. For some reason, I don't believe you. Captain of the guards, arrest them for their lies. No, 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 said the stepmother. Okay, it wasn't my daughter and I. We, I sent my stepdaughter. She's quite a strange girl. Hmm. Well, can she get me some more flowers? Better yet, why don't we have her lead you to them? Hmm. If you can do this, I will give you even more gold. Well, the stepmother and stepdaughter of Anya's rushed to her. Please, you've got to help us. Can't you tell us where you got those flowers? But Anya shook her head. She refused to say anything. Well, why don't you at least go pick some more, said her stepsister. That way the queen will be happy. I suppose I could. The snow has died down. It's not a blizzard anymore. I think I could try. As Anya left, 
her stepmother was plotting with her daughter. You go follow her. I'll tell the queen where to go and we'll catch up. Okay, but to do that, give me some rags. I'll tie them to the ends of the trees where we pass. That way you can follow us. <laughs> Clever girl. Well, as Anya made her way through the snow, her stepsisters falling behind, tying on the branches little rags, so that way the queen and her mother would be able to find them. Well, before long, Anya noticed her stepsister was following her. I told you not to follow me. You go back. I won't go any further. It's too late for that, silly Anya. I've used these rags to mark the way. The queen is going to be here any moment. Oh, Anya felt so betrayed, but she was more sad because she let down the 12 months. Well, before long, a royal sleigh approached, and there in the carriage was the queen, her captain, and many other people, and the stepmother. There she is. That is my daughter, my stepdaughter. Thank you, said the queen. You go. You are going to get a basket full of gold coins, and I will give you anything else you want, but you must show me where you found these flowers. I can't. I promised. Very well. Guards, remove her mittens. Let her hands freeze out here. Well, as one of the guards took off her glove, the ring that was on her finger flew off and fell into through the snow. It rolled along towards the lake, and Anya remembered. Roll, roll along ring, pass through the gates of spring, pass through summer, pass through autumn, over the carpet of winter without any fear, roll up to the door of the waiting new year. Just then the bonfire appeared, and there were the twelve months, with a great wind that came from mighty January staff. It blew and rose everyone in their way. Anya was taken in by April to the twelve months, and they disappeared. But then all of a sudden so did the wind. And all around everyone, it was spring. There was no more snow on the ground. And there were flowers blooming, but just as they appeared, they quickly disappeared. And it was summer. It was so strange. The seasons were passing by faster than anything. And then there was autumn. The leaves that were just growing on the trees now turned gold and fell. And then the snow began to fall, and, and a great wind blew and blew their coats away. We're freezing out here. Now what are we going to do? Well, just then, the 12 months appeared, and there was a beautiful sleigh, and there stood Anya in a beautiful warm coat, and a, the sleigh was decked with wonderful horses and sleigh bells. Why, look at you, said one of the guards. She looks just like a queen. How dare you call her a queen? I'm the real queen. You there, at least give us something warm. Yes, says the stepsister. I want something warm, too. Shush, said the stepmother. Well, there, well, we do have some coats for you, said Mighty January, and he pulled out some lovely coats. I'm afraid they're made of dog fur. That'll be just fine, said the stepsister. Oh, no, you don't, said the stepmother. I want something finer than that. Well, then I'll keep both coats, said the stepsister. Oh, give me that. Well, dog fur suits you, mother. What do you mean? Well, you bark like a dog. I do not do too. I do rawr, rawr, rawr. And soon their words slurred into nothing but yips and barks. And there they stood as dogs. Oh, how disgraceful, said the queen. Well, they're acting as they are and as they were before. Oh dear, said Anya. Please, January, they won't stay like this forever. No, they will remain dogs for three years. But if during that time they become kinder and tamer, bring them here on New Year's Eve on the third year, and I will change them back. Thank you so much. Your Majesty, would you like to ride in the sleigh with me? You would give me a ride after how mean I was to you? Of course. You see, said January, because this girl is so kind, we were able to make it spring for one hour and give her the flowers for you. Because she was kind? Your Majesty, said the captain of the guards, perhaps if you learn to be as gracious and kind as her, many rewards will be given to you as well. You're right. I'm sorry I was so mean to you. Uh, Anya, I'm afraid now I really have nowhere else to go. Well, said the queen, you shall live with me as my sister. And they went home, waving goodbye to the twelve months, and the queen was kind and gentle to Anya. 
They all lived happily ever after. The end.